handout is kind of what I wish the notes were like. Did everybody get? I should be this many. If you came in late or something, these are up here. Make sure everybody gets um, one of those. All right. Front and back, I, I used the Airspace's uh, ink for you uh, to make it look better. All right. So, so here's the typical. Uh, or maybe even not typical. Every every stress strain curve is different, but generally they usually have these different reads. Right, the elastic region, region where it's harder. Right, so the strain hardening region where the stress gets higher and higher. And then it starts to get a portion, a localized portion, where you, you can tell it's about to break. Y'all all watched that YouTube video, right? Hopefully that was, I thought, if we could do that test, we did, we had a lab with our mechanics undergrad class, and so we did a tensile test. Uh, so y'all don't get to do that, but you could watch that one. Um, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> the main things, here's some main things. So maybe on that page, if you have a highlighter or, or circle it, the main things. The slope of the elastic region is E, is modulus of elasticity, also called the elastic modulus, also called Young's modulus, right? The slope of the elastic region is E. So if you know the slope of that and, and different materials, the E will be listed in the back of the book. You know, this type of aluminum has an E of, you know, 200 GPA or something. So if you know that E, and you're in the elastic region right here. E is stress over strength, but I can't emphasize that enough. Only in the elastic region, E is stress over strength. What does that mean? That means if you know two out of, out of three, you know, you can solve for the third. So if you know the materials E, and maybe you know how much it is being stretched, so maybe you know the strain, then you can, find the stress if it's in the elastic region, only if it's in the elastic region. All right. <clears throat> Let's see, what else is important? All right here. The material will unload at a slope of E anywhere. All right. It will unload at a slope of E. All right, so that means if we stress it to this, this level right here, it unloads right, right back to zero. And so there's, there's no deformation, all right? But once we start loading it anywhere into the, you know, yielding region or past, it is going to unload at a slope of E. And so it doesn't make it back to zero. So what point, what does this mean? That point means even with zero stress, it now has some permanent strain. All right, we're going to talk a lot about that loading and unloading, calculating the, the lengths and elongations and strains. Okay, then another uh, important right here. Uh, remember all those allowable stress design problems? Those allowable stress design problems that said the Failure over allowable. Failure stress, it, for, for me, and the way me and uh, Dr. Hughes teach it, failure stress is not, this is not the failure stress. That is the fracture stress. We're going to call this the failure stress. So we're not going to, we don't want it to get past the elastic region, right? Because then it starts really stretching. Then it starts really having deformation. Then it will have permanent deformations even after you uh, the failure in our failure stress is the yield stress. And so if you if we use a factor of safety of, of two or something, then we're, we're going to be like, okay, I'm not letting it get past that that point. So save myself some you know some safety factor of safety. All right. Okay. All right, so that's that's what I would like the notes to look like. So put that uh, put that in your notes.